Uh, next, we'll have uh, Dr. Retsif Levy. He's the MIT Sloan Faculty Co-Director for Global Operations. Doctor, is it Levy or Levy? Levy. Levy, okay. So, uh, thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator, for hosting us today, and uh, thank you for all the uh, individuals that shared their stories. Uh, I'm personally inspired by what you told us today, that we, we all have to make more effort uh, to have better answers for you. Um, my name is Retsef Levy. I'm a faculty on the MIT uh, from 2006. I have no conflict of interest to declare today, and I'm speaking on my own behalf and not uh, representing MIT's position. Uh, my academic research is in the area of advanced analytics, risk management, and safety, and I've been working extensively with health systems and also on manufacturing of biologics uh, in collaborations uh, with pharmaceutical companies and under uh, multiple uh, FDA contracts and awards. I'm an avid believer in modern medicine. Me and my six uh, children uh, are fully vaccinated with all the traditional vaccines, including flu vaccines, and I'm personally vaccinated uh, with the modern vi vi vaccine. Uh, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I'm just a scientist, happen to be a scientist that challenge the current narrative that dominates public policy, public health policies around the world in the US and in Israel. Uh, and while it's being called the mainstream narrative, I personally find it very extreme. In fact, I'm quite sure that it will be considered extreme by any fundamental principle that we have about management of global pandemics until two years ago. So I don't want to re repeat um, everything that was said here, but I can tell you that I know many mainstream scientists and medical uh, professionals who, similar to me, think that the current narrative is extreme and wrong. But very few of them are willing to speak up and I'm not sure I can blame them because any attempt to deviate from the main narrative today is faced with a wall of hostility, rejection, and even elimination from the government, including funding agencies, from public media, and worst of all, from the scientific community itself. And let me just quote a very close colleague at MIT, a, a member of the National Academy of Engineering. This is one of the most distinguished uh, 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 status that you can have as, a, as an academic. He told me something like that, and I quote, you have to be careful because you can be eliminated. And he told me that in the context of raising concerns about the current main narrative about how to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. And let me give you a few examples that illustrate what I consider to be a problematic state of, of the scientific work as it relates to COVID-19. Back in April 2021, there were multiple scientific articles that were published uh, based on data from Israel in the most premier academic journals, New England Journal of Medicine and The Lancet. These articles asserted that the Pfizer vaccine provides a well over 90% relative protection against COVID-19 infections of course, not showing the data. They were quoted by the media as presumably providing epidemiological support to the narrative of vaccine-induced herd immunity and the related mandates. Now, many experts, me included, knew immediately that there are major flaws in these studies and that the efficacy estimates of the vaccines are likely to be wrong. Many appeals were made to the journals. Most of them were not, most of them were rejected and were not published based on the argument that it's not a priority. Several months later, we all know that these estimates turned out to be very wrong. These vaccines do not prevent infections, or at least they don't do that over uh, a long period of time. In fact, the story is, is, is now repeated, repeating itself. Several weeks ago, there are two additional scientific articles, basically by the same set of authors in the same, very same journals, now promising us 
that the booster vaccines that were given in Israel have an efficacy of over 90% in protecting against infections. Let me mention just two of the flaws of these studies that can be easily understood by everybody. The first is that all of these studies follow patients for an extremely short period of time. In most of the cases, far less than two weeks. One has to ask himself or herself, what does it even mean to follow someone for two weeks in order to determine the efficacy of a vaccine? The second problem with these studies is that they do not account for the, for the fact that the num they do not account for how many tests were conducted on the different populations of patients. When you do that, when you incorporate that into the analysis, you immediately find out that even in the best case scenario, immediately after vaccination, these vaccines do not have an efficacy of over 90%, but something more like 60% efficacy. But the storyline is similar when it comes to safety. Scientific publications in the most prestigious journals asserting that the vaccine is safe, failing to report on serious side effects such as deaths, whereas attempts to raise awareness to concerning data, and I'm gonna share a personal example about that. Me and my authors, co-authors, pointed out that when you look on national emergency services calls in Israel for cardiac arrest among young individuals under 40, you see a dramatic increase of 25% in these calls parallel to the vaccination campaign in Israel in early 2021 and with statistical association to that campaign. We wrote a paper about that, not claiming that there is a causal effect between the vaccines and the, what we see, because we don't have a proof to, for that. But we did raise the concern and we called authorities to check what is going on. Needless to say that we never re, uh, got a response from the authorities, and in fact, they, go, they went public and called this research fake. But even more concerning, journal after journal after journal in the academic literature is rejecting this article most of the time based on the argument that it is not a priority. Well, I don't think that calling safety concerns fake is morally right or scientifically right. I think it's clear that these vaccines are not naive. They have serious and unprecedented side effects and we need to use them with caution following the very basic principles in medicine. First, do no harm. Now, just to clarify, I think that vaccines have a role in the pandemic of protecting the high-risk populations against severe illness and deaths, together with therapeutics, like the sen Senator uh, uh, already mentioned. But I do think that we need to do that when we are sure that we turned over every stone to be able to look at everybody's eyes and say, we did everything we can to know the risks and benefits of these vaccines. The fight of this nasty virus, the, the fight of this, uh, in this, in, in this nasty virus requires collective humility, empathy, and having science on our side. I'm very concerned that we lost all of these in the last 18 months. Thank you for your attention.